a little bit of liquid courage for today's video. Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter and welcome to my complaint video. <laughs> so I have talked about repairs on this channel quite often and every once in a while I run into a model of typewriter that I just really don't like. And I know that's pretty controversial, but as you go through and test a bunch of different machines, learn how they operate or learn how they work, you'll find that you have preferences for some machines, some repair tactics, some mechanics that you like better than others. I've talked about this in my 1950s Royal Portable videos. I do not like the style of the Royal Quiet Deluxe, Royal Arrow, Royal Aristocrat, any of those 1950s Royal Body Design portable machines. They're just not for me. I've never had one that I liked and that I didn't have to work on in some capacity. I have found another model to add to that list. So welcome to my repair nightmare of my Corsair Deluxe. Now, quick disclaimer, everything about this is personal preference. These are my opinions. This does not mean that you will have a bad experience with your Corsair Deluxe. In fact, I have a Corsair Deluxe that I love and cherish. My first ever typewriter was a 1960s Corsair Deluxe that I got on eBay. Caroline, I love that typewriter. She's never going anywhere, but she's not the world's best typer. And that's a thing that I've only learned after trying a bunch of different machines and repairing a bunch of different machines. And now we come to this Corsair Deluxe, which is a different Corsair Deluxe, don't worry. Caroline was made in England, this one was made in Singapore. And this is a machine that I have struggled with for a very long time. So a few videos ago, I talked about how I sold 10 typewriters. That's right, I sold 10 typewriters. And the last typewriter I sold was actually my 1950s Royal Aristocrat, which I had repaired and had traded to someone who had bought a typewriter that wasn't working for their daughter for Christmas and they wanted to give her a working one. So we arranged a trade. He gave me this typewriter and $40 and I gave him the working Royal Aristocrat. Not a great trade now that I look back on it, but I'm okay that I got rid of that Royal Aristocrat because that was another repair nightmare of mine. So this is a 19 late 50s, early 60s Corsair Deluxe. This is the response to the Smith Corona Skywriter. So after they started making the 4Y series of the Skywriters, they transitioned into this body style, which is plastic. Plastic? I don't know why that sounded weird coming out of my mouth. And they made this for a while in a few different typewriter designs. The Cougar, I feel like there was another one, but I can't remember the name of it. Cougar's the only one I remember. This came in a variety of colors um, and they were made in a lot of different places. I really like the portability of this. This is considered an ultra portable. And I got this machine and I wasn't really sure what was wrong with it. The person I had got it from had sent me videos and asked if I could repair it instead of buying one for the first time. They said it was dirty and every time they pressed a key or the space bar, the entire carriage moved as if it was being tabbed instead of typed on. And I didn't really know what that was. I thought maybe it was a margin issue that I could fix until I got my hands on it. The issue I'm having is anytime you hit a key, uh, it seems to go to the tab markers rather than like clicking individually. I'm not sure what that is. I, my guess would be that it's the escapement paw, like not clicking in per key or I don't know what's happening. Um, but I don't know how to get to the bottom of the typewriter to like check in to see the escapement. I did try to clean it out with mineral spirits and clean out that paw, but it's kind of hard to reach. I don't know if you have any suggestions. Now, because I didn't know what the skipping issue actually was, I was not sure what the next step was with this project. I actually went through and I removed all the keycaps on this machine. That's something I've watched other typewriter repair people do. They go through and they'll actually clean all the keycaps off of these and you can take off the top little white pieces of these keys and clean them. So I did that and then I also used them to make some of my Redbubble merch and I'll link that down below. I went through and used the keys to make different designs and then I put them all back on the typewriter and in that process I had also bent some of the, the key bars on the machine. So it was skipping, it had kind of a wonky looking keyboard, it was missing this top ribbon piece and I didn't know what to do next. The first logical thing would be to figure out how to get it out of the case and that took me a really long time. So like the Skywriter, this actually is only held in the case by about four screws. There are no screws on the bottom of this machine. It took me a really long time to figure that out <laughs> and to find the four screws that would actually remove the body of the machine out of the casing. So its construction is it has this bottom like bowl shape 
plastic piece that has the feet. It has the internal actual body of the typewriter slotted in. And then on top of it is this casing, this plastic casing piece that kind of snaps into place. And then obviously the lid. It took me a really long time just to get those pieces off of it. And once I had it out of the casing, I had to figure out what was causing it to skip. So what had happened was the escapement, the star wheel, clicks into place by two little paws. And I'm gonna talk about these because this is a new term I learned from Ted Monk of the typewriter database, who is slowly teaching me typewriter vocabulary. So the escapement works by having a little wheel thing, the star wheel, and it clicks into place and is stopped by two little hook-like stoppers. And these are called the loose dog and the rigid dog. Yes, like a dog. And what they do is they stop the arms of the star wheel in place so that when you press on a letter, the rigid dog stops those paws every single space to type the letter and then advance. And the tab moves uh, several of those paws to move the carriage across the top, like you're tabbing. What had happened was the loose dog, which is the one that does all the tapping, it's loose in there, it moves, it jiggles around, it moves pretty freely, didn't have a problem with that one. That one was working, but it was the only one that was engaging. And so every time you pressed a key on the keyboard, instead of stopping every single space, it was actually moving as if it was tabbing because there was nothing to stop it every single space because, hold for suspense, the rigid dog was broken. So here's the bottom of the typewriter. You can see here, is the other side of that escapement, that star wheel. Under it is the little silver tooth that moves for tabs. And then you have this arm right here. This moves individual spaces. So here's my broken one. You see how it's got the little silver one on the bottom? That's your tab that moves out of the way for tabs. But you see how there's nothing on this side? And it looks straight, right? So you could assume that, oh, that must be, you know, how it came out of the factory. But if you look at it closely, you see how it's shiny and it looks like it's textured there? That is a snap. So the arm piece that we have on the typewriter, see that little arm? Completely missing on this one. So there was nothing to stop the individual arms of that star wheel from going forward. So the rigid dog is actually a piece that is rigid. It doesn't move, it is stable, it is attached to the plate. And what it is is this little hook and it stops each of those little arms every single space. And mine was snapped off. Now, when we were looking at the bottom plate of this typewriter, and I sent lots of pictures to Lucas at Typewriter Chicago, I posted it in the maintenance group, nobody could tell me what was wrong. It had actually snapped in such a way that it looked like it was machined that way on purpose. It was flat. It had a straight edge to it, so I never questioned if that was broken because it looked like it came from the factory that way, just because of how straight that snap was. If it was a little bit more jagged, I probably would have questioned it more. When we took that piece out, because my dad determined that's probably what was wrong with it, we were able to look at the side of it and we could see the silver pieces on the edge of that and that indicated to us that the piece that was on there had snapped in some capacity. So I actually went to the typewriter maintenance group and I highly suggest you go and become a member of the typewriter repair and maintenance group. It's super helpful if you're ever working on a repair or need parts. I had posted a picture of that piece and it asked for some photo references from somebody else's machine so that we could make our own rigid dog piece to stop the star wheel every time you hit a letter. And instead, I was very lucky and I was able to get in contact with Ted Monk of the typewriter database and he was able to send me a replacement piece for that entire section. So he sent me the entire plate for that area so that now we had a working loose dog, we had a working rigid dog, and the typewriter was actually stopping in the appropriate places. He also sent me this top plate to cover the ribbon spools, which was missing from the original typewriter. So very much thank you to Ted who sent me these pieces and we were able to fix that part of the typewriter. But wait, there's more. So after we had that piece kind of working, we went into the process of putting the typewriter back into the case and that exposed a lot more problems that we really didn't know what was going on with. So as we were slotting this back into the case, we ran into a few issues. First of all, the shift wasn't working. Like you hit the button, 
and nothing happens. And I've had problems with shift baskets before, usually on electric, so I didn't even know where to start looking at this machine. So after looking at some reference photos from another collector, so shout out to Ted, thank you for sending me some photos, uh, we determined that this arm, which was resting here on the frame of the typewriter, was actually supposed to hit this bar to move the typewriter shifting up and down. And what that does is it actually lengthens this top piece to fit underneath the shift mechanism here. So now everything works. We just put it in wrong and had it not hitting the right part of the frame. And we were able to tell that from the wear marks on the machine itself. So now I know how important wear marks are in determining how a typewriter actually operates. Will it help me later? Probably not. And then the other problem we encountered was the space bar. So as you would press the space bar, the carriage would actually stop and not advance. And what the typewriter thought was happening was it thought the space bar was being depressed all the time because it was being trapped by the case. So instead of moving forward, it just thought space was always being held down. There's about a quarter inch between the bottom of the case and the case topper, which is a separate piece that that space bar has to travel to press the space down and back up. And what was happening was we had bent the bottom of this typewriter from taking it out of the case so many times and trying to figure out how it worked that we had bent it into the wrong angle. So now to depress the space bar, you were actually traveling a much larger space. What we had to do was bend back that bar on the bottom of the machine into the right angle to actually get it to travel in this quarter inch space between the bottom and the top and actually depress the space bar that way and have it click back up into space. That took us some testing and some experimenting and that process actually took us several months to figure out how to operate correctly because we just didn't know what we were doing. So we thought it was working and I went to put on the rest of the casing topper stuff and then as I was typing, I noticed the carriage would get stuck. And I didn't know what it was, so I decided to not fiddle with it so that I didn't break anything. Today I went down to look at it and I realized that if the space bar gets pressed down, it doesn't bounce back up. And if it's down, none of the keys will move the carriage. So if I pop the space bar back up, the carriage moved, and now I can type again. Now, if the carriage stops moving, it means that the space bar got pressed down somehow. And if I pop it up, the carriage moves and I can type again. So something's up with the space bar. It also doesn't feel like it's indexing correctly here. made it. That's it. Let's give it a try. I'm making a video on the worst repair we've ever done. <laughs> on the worst typewriter yeah. you've ever bought. This is it. That looks like it's working. You fixed it. That took us two months. <laughs> Another problem we had was that when I had taken off the keycaps, I had done so kind of haphazardly, and I had actually bent some of the key bars that were associated with these key tops. Some of them were pressed too low, some of them were actually angled a little bit because it was hard to get those keycaps off the top of there, and I also didn't do it properly. And what that means is that the keys then were not level. So when you were typing on the keyboard, you were not getting a very level experience across the rows of keys you were working on, and it just makes typing on the typewriter almost impossible because you're not working on a level space. Insert these two really cool tool pieces that I have a little bit of a story about. So as we were trying to figure out how to straighten those key bars that I had stupidly bent, my dad looked at me and he said, man, if I just had a piece of metal that had two slots on it that I could attach to the side of this, I could bend it into the right angle. And I went into my tool bag and pulled out this. And I said, you mean like this thing? So a couple of years ago, I was actually in contact with a typewriter repair tech, time traveler typewriter, Garrett, on Instagram. He had done a live stream every single week with another typewriter repair tech. I loved watching the live stream. I learned so much. I'd actually emailed him a few times with repair questions and he was nice enough to help me out on some of my projects. And then he and I became pen pals and we sent letters back and forth 
um, that entire summer. At the end of the summer, he was actually sending me a message and he said, hey, I found this guy who's selling typewriter tools. And if you're serious about typewriter repair, you should probably get yourself a couple of official typewriter tools. And I said, I have no idea what I'm looking at here. Please advise me. So he sent me a picture of the tools and circled which ones were the right tools that I could probably use. And I was able to get these two little bendy bar thingies for about $10 from that seller. Unfortunately, Garrett did pass away later that year. Um, and so I only had these two little tools and a stack of letters to remember him by. He had helped me with a lot of projects and he was just a really wonderful person. And I got these pieces and I didn't really know what they were for. They looked bendy, they looked like metal. I didn't really know what they did. So I sat them in my tool bag, hoping that someday I'd be able to find somebody who could tell me what these were. And as we were looking at this project and I was able to pull out this typewriter tool to bend those keys back into place, I finally got to realize what these two little bar tools are for. So these are for adjusting the keys and for adjusting the type slugs. A lot of typewriter pieces work based on adjustment. They have to be at just the right angle or the right height to actually operate. And sometimes when those get messed up, it's hard to bend them back into shape. These two tools are used for that. So when we actually got to figure out what these were for, I had this really aha moment that reminded me of a few years ago when Garrett had told me to get these pieces. It was kind of this nice, lovely moment where I got to remember somebody who was really helpful to me, who had helped me with a lot of projects and who told me to get these tools and I finally got to use them. Um, and it was just this really nice, peaceful moment in what was otherwise a repair nightmare. So I got these two tools. They were really cool and actually really helpful for very specific tasks on repairing this typewriter. We were able to fix the keyboard and make sure everything was straight and level with each other so that when you're typing on it, it's a nice experience. So we got the shift working, we got the spacebar working, it actually types like it's supposed to. And then I also had to put the carriage back together. And um, that was more complicated than I had initially thought. So what's kind of difficult about some of these newer, more modern typewriters is that they are not designed like some of the typewriters from the 1950s. When you get into platens like this, they're actually held together by hex screws, which is a new thing I also learned about which you can use an Allen wrench on. Look at me using my terminology. So I got to remove the platen from this typewriter. It took me a few tries to figure out what was going on with it because it was not a design I was familiar with. The caps didn't have any screws on them. Uh, I didn't know how it was all fit together. Once you remove these little hex screws, you can actually remove the platen knobs, take the platen out, and underneath the platen knobs hiding are two little screws that hold this top plastic piece in place. I removed those. I also had to struggle to get the arm off of this machine because I didn't know it had an E-clip. Now I know it has an E-clip. You should learn what E-clips are. They're very helpful. <laughs> And once I had removed all those pieces, I had to put it back together. And what I struggled with putting it back together was actually the order in which things went back on the machine. I had spent a really long time trying to get the margins back on this typewriter and get that case topper into the right location. And I just wasn't doing it right for the longest time. Ah! I cannot for the life of me get this whole to match up with that hole to screw this top in. Like no matter the amount of pressure I put on it, no matter how many times I redo the margins, nothing is making these fit together. And it's so frustrating. I was trying desperately to figure out why I couldn't get the margins back on to get the case top back on. It was not fitting. And then I realized I was screwing this margin bar to the outside of this bracket when I should be screwing it to the inside of the bracket, which makes way more sense. So let's see if we can get it to work now. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it was that easy. Now those holes match up perfectly because there's not this extra bar blocking the way. So that makes a lot more sense. So finally, everything was working. It was time to test it. I put a new ribbon in it. And man, I struggle with ribbons on these tiny little Corsars all the time. Every single time I put one back onto a Corsair like this, I mess it up and I messed it up on this one as well. So I got that spool stuck. So with a little bit of WD-40, a lot of pressure and some pixie dust, I was able to 
fix the spool, put it on there correctly this time. And once I did that, I realized that the paper gripper wasn't working. I couldn't roll paper through it. I had just fixed this entire freaking typewriter and I couldn't get paper to roll through it. And what I ended up doing was having to take that top part off again for the 80th time. And I had just one screw that wasn't screwed in far enough. It was like a nano millo tiny little bit that I just had to turn that screw a little to get the paper tray to actually sit in the right location so that the rollers would actually grip paper and roll it through. And then I had a working typewriter. It took me six months from start to finish to just diagnose this typewriter, figure out what I needed to source the right parts, and then get it back together. My dad actually said as we were working on this project, whoever designed this was a genius because they designed it so exactly and specifically that it only fits in one very specific way. And that can make it really difficult to work on because if you're just off by a tiny, tiny little turn of a screw, it won't operate properly. And that is something we struggled with on this entire project in a way that I've never struggled with on any other repair project before. And I actually had somebody message me while I was mid repair on this and they were asking about getting a typewriter for their daughter and they said I've been looking at a Corsair Deluxe would that be a good option and I immediately said no the typing experience I think is totally fine for a new user I didn't know any different when I first got it and I thought it was amazing but as you get to experiment with different typewriters you'll find you'll have different preferences both repair wise and typing experience wise and the typing experience of a Corsair Deluxe is a lot different than something that's maybe a little bit more sturdy a little bit older a little bit different design. And then the repair tactics on this are just so much more complicated than some of those other machines that if anything ever went wrong on this typewriter, you might be hard pressed to find somebody who would repair it for you or figure out how to do it yourself because there's just not as much information on how everything works together. Now, if you have lots of experience in typewriters, you could probably look at this and could have told me really early on what was wrong with it, but I didn't know and I was learning as I went and I found it not to be as intuitive of a process as working on something like a 1950s 50s Corsair or 1950s Smith Corona or even my 1930s Royal 10 which we were able to look at and kind of figure out even though that was also a bit of a nightmare. This process was really illuminating. I learned a lot. Not an experience I would like to redo. <laughs> So I have like this running list of typewriters that I will not repurchase. I will not repurchase a Royal Quiet Deluxe body style. I just won't do it. Personal preference here, for me it is not a thing that I'm willing to get into again. I just don't enjoy the process of working on them. I've never had a nice one. I just don't like it. Personal preference, I know people don't agree with me and that's why it's great that there's so much variety. This is another one that I'm adding to that list. I did not enjoy working on this machine. I found it to be frustrating. I found it to be really complicated. I learned so much from this process. I learned about hex screws and typewriter terminology and key bender bar things and all about how to put stuff back together and take them apart 80,000 times. But it is not an experience that I would like to do over and over and over again because I just think there's so many places where things could go wrong or be adjusted improperly and cause the typewriter not to work lot of problem checking and solving and it's just not something I'm ready to tackle again so I will not be repurchasing any machines in this body design even though I love my original one she's never going anywhere this one can go away rather quickly that would be nice actually so I don't have to look at it anymore <laughs> but it's not a machine that I would repurchase now which is good because I don't need any more typewriters so it's good that I'm finding ones that I will not buy <laughs> So I know I had some comments on my selling typewriters video that had asked what had happened to this machine. This is what happened to that machine in the course of about six months. This has been a big repair job for me that was not redoing it from the ground up. So I don't know why it was just as frustrating as redoing an entire typewriter, but it's one that I learned a lot from. So that's good, but a nightmare that I would like to not relive. <laughs> So that's been a little bit of repairing this Corsair Deluxe. If you're interested in more repair and restoration videos, I do have a repair and restoration playlist. I'll link that down below so you can check that out. I also have some other videos on this channel that are more positive. Today was about complaining and I hope you're okay with that because I needed to get this off my chest and off my repair table. So I wanna thank you all so much for watching today and remind you that you're just my type, writer. Just, just not this type of writer because I like you more than this typewriter.
finger stuck. I got my finger stuck. Ow, 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 ow. Ow. 